it started at 2009. Uh, apply for nursing so I, I had to go through an interview and I graduated in 2011 so the things I learned in ITE uh, provided a very strong foundation for me when I went into uh, diploma in nursing so I actually absorbed a lot of things better I understood things better because of my attachment experience and the things that were taught to me in ITE because so it will really help you if you go to poly then um, I started work in 2014 in Changi Hospital um, as a staff nurse for two years to last. Then I decided I wanted to further my studies. So I applied to NUS. The interesting thing is that from ITE all the way to my NUS, right, I was sponsored by Changi. And in 2019, I graduated with a bachelor, nursing with honours. So in 2020, when I started work, I submitted my thesis um, in community nursing and it's a big reason why I'm a community nurse now. I can relate to you very well because I was there in your place. I was I started from ITE. It doesn't matter if let's say we're not doing well in our O level or N level, right? It's how you take the opportunity to be focused in your ITE, absorb as much as you can because the path to uh, in nursing is quite established. And if you really work hard at it, you can actually graduate with diploma and then degree at some point. So if let's say you didn't go to NUS um, or SIT for your degree, there's also part-time degrees program. It is something that you should actually try to uh, aim for. It will really help you, you know, as a career profession. Um, during various parts of my journey in the interviews, my friends and families, um, they always ask me, so why did I choose nursing? Because it felt safe. People will always need help. On a certain level, you always have a job. In Singapore or overseas, there will always be a demand for nurses, but it comes with a lot of challenges as well. This diagram is called an Ikigai. It's a Japanese diagram. It's a simplified diagram about asking yourself what you want to do with your life. So there are four separate circles. So one is you love what you're doing. Second one is the world needs. And the third one is you're paid for what you're doing. And the last one is you're good at it. So for me, I love what I'm doing. I love nursing because I get satisfaction from helping people. Some days will be very good and some days are going to be tough. But this is nursing. This is the nature of nursing. Um, you deal with the best and the worst natures of people. In the past two years, you realize that um, nurses are really needed everywhere. And recently, if you were to, to go on TikTok or Instagram, right, they spoken about this, uh, any updates on nursing, right? there's the salary enhancement. So the nurses now have better salary. They are actually acknowledging the necessity for nurses and giving credit. And last one is, um, you're great at it. I am still trying to improve myself, trying to do better, try to refine my skills, my communication skills and all that. Okay, so this is where we connect the dots. So you can see that the values and skills of a nurse, the stress management, the adaptability, the communication, the conflict resolution, so as you go on as a nurse, right, um, these are the little things that you need to improve yourself in, try to refine your skills through these soft and hard skills, the ability to pay attention to details, the critical thinking aspect as a nurse because your, your situation can change at any point of time, uh, the empathy and compassion because your patients are mostly in pain and they might lash out at you. The relatives are stressed because they are caring for their parents and things like that. We need to empathize with the situation and not push them hard or, or just get angry at them. And I'm sure during your attachments, right, you encountered this kind of patients and family before. Okay, so for roles and responsibilities of a nurse as a staff, for students, you mean 15 minutes should be fine, lah, but as a staff, right, you need to uh, look up at your patient case, patient load, what kind of patients you have. You need to prepare some of the medications, prepare some of the documents prior to starting because as you take up the report, right, you have in the back of your mind um, the patient's history, situation, um, treatment, care plan. So there'll be various roles that you have to play. Sometimes it's going to be the floater. Um, most probably you'll be uh, dealing with how to prepare or preparing the requisites. Then as a community nurse, it's going to be a bit different because uh, we will be doing the rounds uh, with our consultants, our doctors. Uh, we'll be taking charge, taking treatment plan in the rounds that we'll be engage to be developing the treatment plan the care plan together with the doctors and realizing with a lot of um, allied health professionals um, talking to them regarding patients um, therapy how is it going what kind of therapy they need uh, speaking to social workers uh, putting on the head of social worker at home to see whether they need this assistance that assistance and what kind of community services and resources we can tap on for them and we are speaking very closely um, with the family members 
about how we want to manage and develop a care plan for them. Lah. Okay, for career progression, right, there's uh, more and more branches that's uh, being open for nurses. Um, there's the clinical, which you see our nurse clinicians uh, who's on the ground becoming an APN. There's the management where you manage the uh, manpower. There's also the research part uh, where you uh, do a lot of research, do literature, how to refine the processes and quality improvements. The ones that's not so known are the informatics and the new one, which is innovation. As you progress, there's a lot of, of possibilities for you to uh, specialize yourself in. I'm sure there's always a place um, with your skill set because everyone has different skill sets. Some, uh, some people are very good at IT. You might be good at informatics, uh, doing data. Just push on, learn as much as you can, be a staff nurse, and you know there's a lot of path for you forward. Okay. The last one is uh, my tips for nursing students. First one is you want to pace yourself when you study. You don't want to study at the last minute you will only usually absorb about 20%. So you just do a brief read up, just take the highlighted points, okay? That will, that will really help you, um, especially if you go up into diploma and degree level. Yeah, second one is concept mapping. So this is something that might be a bit new. And then when I was in diploma and degree, I realized that concept mapping works better uh, because you realize that a lot of these systems are interrelated. So as you do concept mapping, right? And that's how you understand better on what to anticipate in terms of nursing care plan, in terms of the treatment and why, what medications are for what and why. Yeah. And the last part is repetition because it's really, really important as nurses. One is because uh, practice makes perfect. And um, the more you practice, the more it becomes muscle memory, the more you are confident in doing it. So this really helps. So take the opportunity to actually um, engage with the nurses in your ward. Ask them, are there anything that I can do, I can help with? It will really help with, with your confidence level as a nurse. What are the disciplines that you need to have as a nurse before you, I mean, prepare yourself before joining nursing? You need to be the best of the best of a nurse to be able to work in such a highly stressful setting. So it was a journey of self-discovery. What am I good at? What do I want to do in nursing in the long run? And where do I find myself most um, happiest? So these are the questions that you will ask yourself. So one, you can explore during your um, attachments. Talk to all the nurses. They will give you, most of them will give you the realistic picture of what nursing is like in that particular specialty. Say, okay, the, the good thing about nursing in this area is this, this, this. They also tell you about this, this is not so good. Um, number one, you don't need to, to actually uh, commit yourself to one particular specialty. Then number two, it is also okay for you to jump to different specialty as you find yourself in a nursing journey. See where it goes because sometimes nursing does not um, mean that you have to stay in a hospital. How do you prepare for internship? Uh, because uh, you know some of them are feeling nervous or scared uh, to be on the ground. Maybe there's some tips that you would like to share with the students? Um, for me personally, my part-time works actually helped me during this internship kind of stuff. Lah. So, so when you come here with open mind, then it is easier for you to accept the environment around you. So don't take everything they say too hard. Just take it um, what you think is constructive for you. You take it in, then you, uh, you try to uh, improve on it on the next time, next day you come for work. Lah. So that's a very important thing you guys need to take note of. Lah. Then the other one is there's opportunities. So all these opportunities for skills doesn't come every day. So it's going to be tough for you because um, opportunities, they, they don't wait for you, you know, for you to be available. You need to look for it. And then when, it's, when it presents itself, take a step forward and say, I want to try. Um, as a nurse in future, whether it be enrolled nurse or staff nurse, whichever hospital you're going to be in, all hospitals are good. Okay, so uh, you just go and spread your wings and fly.